Louisville National Champions 1980. Cardinals have won the national championship. 75th NCAA College Basketball Champions. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to another episode. This is episode 71 of the Third Banner Pod. Tonight, you've got Ty. Josh is on the way. He said he'd be here in five or ten, so we're going to hold it down without him for now. I'm Ash. Ready to come at you, Ty. What are your thoughts? You weren't with us on Wednesday, so I'm anxious to hear from you. Yeah, you uh, you guys crushed it the other day. Um, good job, good job. I see Slava and Trace already here. Thank you, boys. Um, man, this has been a wild ride to, to get to this point, man. A wild ride. Um, I want to say I talked to I've been talking to a lot of people and and having conversations with so many different people about everything that's happened the last few weeks. Um and on Cardinal Authority Board, I actually spoke to and talked to uh, a user by the name This Bird Has Teeth. He's a, a loyal listener and tunes into us. And uh, we had a good conversation about all this and kind of, you know, recapping our feelings on this coaching search and, and how we got to this point. And um, I, I kind of want to echo some of the same things that you guys said the other day. Um I will be honest, and before everybody, before any of our haters or anybody wants to clip this and send it on out, listen, just hold on, listen. Um, I will say, I do feel like Josh Hurd made this search incredibly difficult on himself and really, at times, put you know painted himself in a corner. I think he mishandled a lot of the leaks and things like that. Um, because let's be honest, it was pretty well known from the beginning that Josh was going to keep things very close to the chest. He had a very small knit circle and, um, you know, anything that was coming out from national sources, if it was, if it was pretty credible, it was because it was coming from Josh, right? Like it was, you know, it was from the AD it's from the athletic department. And, when the whole Dusty May thing went down, I think it really left Josh and the in the athletic department. I have people that have told me it left them stunned and 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 shocked. And I think he kind of I don't know what the word I want to say is. I think he kind of just not necessarily freaked out, but it, it caused chaos, right? Like that whole decision caused a lot of chaos. Um, I hope that he takes a lot of lessons and, 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 and makes adjustments and changes for the future so that, you know, if he's in this situation again, he doesn't have to, um, you know, he doesn't have to make the same mistakes. Now I will say, I do feel like at the end, he salvaged it, um, you know, there's there's definitely things that when it comes to Coach Kelsey that are still question marks, but we're going to be talking about his presser. And Ash, I know you told me before we came on, you you didn't get to catch much of it. You were busy that day, but it was it was awesome, man. Pat Kelsey crushed that presser. And I know that a lot of people will say, well, it's easy. It's an intro presser. Just say what people want to hear. I mean, he did that and more. He was awesome. His energy is phenomenal. It's hard not to feel that buzz and that that excitement. And while the, the search was long, and I do feel like it was made out to be more difficult than it ever needed to be, I'm happy how it ended. And I'm excited for the future with Coach Kelsey. And if you watch that presser, there's no way you couldn't be excited because his energy is infectious, man. It's infectious. So we'll talk about the presser some more. Um, we'll talk about Coach Kelsey and 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 things that we really like, things that we're we have question marks about. But ultimately, I feel I, I feel excited, man. I feel excited again. I'm back on the train. 
I woke up that day when I saw the Patino Jr. news and I was very worried and uh, to see that it all ended up the way it did. And we now have Coach Kelsey. I'm excited, man. It's I think he's going to be good. There's some things that he'll have to work on, but I think he's going to be a damn good coach. And um, I give Josh credit for how he managed the end result. Like the, it, it took a while to get to the end result and it was messy to get there, but the end result was, in my opinion, good. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it all works. Josh, thank you for joining us. Um, we we're kind of talking about the search and uh, Coach Kelsey before we really dive into the presser and reactions. Do you, do you want to add anything to that? or? Yeah, I mean, I think I touched on it wednesday for the most part um my feelings about like the search i mean i think everybody knows probably could have went smoother to put it nicely um you know i think this was josh's real first search right like um kp was kind of i mean forced on him honestly and i feel like brahm was such a obvious hire that i think any one of us could have probably hired brahm and i think he would have came so this was his first like real you know, foray into doing that. So, um, you know, there's going to be hiccups uh, when you do that. But um, I feel like even with all the bumps that he had, like you said, Ty, like the end result, like I'm floored, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to, I don't want to get into the presser yet, but like, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly pretty excited right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited as well. I didn't get a chance to watch the press conference. I had a fundraising event treat, that I had dude. to be at um, for advancement that was pre-planned, you know, months ago. Uh, just bad timing that that had happened to be at five thirty, so I had to be at at the location at like three o'clock yesterday and missed the whole thing. So I'm excited to see. I know Ty's got some clips queued up uh, that we'll check out here in a little bit. So I'm excited to see that. And after what you guys were saying in the in the Discord and everything uh, today, I, I'm just really excited for the future. Uh, I really think that that this is going to end up being. While it may not have been our first choice at, at for in, initially, I think this is going to be long term the right hire, and I, and I can't wait to see it get started. Yeah. Um, it, and, and you made a point there where. It, I, don't, I think it's obvious, and even and even Coach Kelsey in the press conference even kind of you know joked about it that I think everybody knows he wasn't the first choice, but that doesn't mean that he's the wrong choice in the end of this. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that he's the wrong choice. And um, I've seen some comments in here. I saw I see Corey says not one NCAA tournament win. That's that's a that's a question mark for sure. Uh, there's no denying that that. And we've discussed that when we talked about him, I think on Wednesday and, and you're right. He, he doesn't have a tournament when there's no real tournament success. He's made it, but hasn't made it past the open, you know, the first round. So, um, yeah, th there's, there's no, there's, there's no real retort to that. So I think, you know, ultimately the hope is, is that he's going no, to have right. much better resources here. Uh, recruiting is going to hopefully take a huge boost and, and he has experience in previous positions recruiting at this level. So you hope that, um, that will obviously change and it, it'll have to, if he wants to be successful here at UofL, it, it will have to, he's going to have to win, uh, in the tournament that we, that's the standard we expect to not only make it, but we expect to make runs and win tournament games. So there's no denying that. And as Slava pointed out, uh, you know, every team that he lost to went to six, Sweet 16 or further. And when you're coming out of the Big South Conference or the, the Colonial, it's really hard to get the type of seeding that you need to advance in a tournament. So you're behind the eight ball to begin with. So it, it's really hard to fault a coach uh, for not advancing the tournament when you're a 13, 14 seed. So I, re I really can't put too much blame on him for that. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, um, I don't. I don't want to. Sorry, Josh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh no, you're good. I, I was just gonna say. I mean, I don't want to rehash what we talked about on Wednesday, but I mean, the pool of candidates. Like for me, previous tournament success was like very high on my list. Like that was one thing I really looked for, like sustained success. And there just wasn't a lot of candidates out there, to be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. we 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 got to a point where it was like you're either gonna have Scott Drew, 
who had a championship or you're going to have a lot of guys with question marks. So, um, you know, no matter who we hired, whether it was Richard Patino or uh, shirts, I mean, we were going to have similar questions and I, I, you know, I know we're going to pivot to this, but like after that presser, like, dude, I'm in, like, I, I'm mm. totally sold. I'm ready to get hurt again. Like, let's go. Like I'm, yeah. I'm stoked. Yeah. And uh, Ohio podcast is how much time will you be given to turn this around for you guys, given the transfer portal? Um, I mean, he's going to have, he's going to have a fair chance, right? Like it, it all, what really determines everything is the end results with, you know, wins. I mean, it, that's going to really matter. We we're coming. Louisville is not, Louisville is not four and 28. Mm. Louisville is not eight and 24. Like, we are consistently supposed to be in the tournament, making runs, winning championships. So, you know, I think year one, the expectation is that you go close to somewhere around 500. Well, I and, mean, and Pat Kelsey even, uh, he even said like the, if you don't, if you don't plan on winning, don't put your shoes on. I mean that he expects to win. He yeah. expects to win. And year and, two, you've got to be cleanly into the tournament, not just, not just, you know, breezing on the bubble. Like, I mean, you've got to really be a, a lock, in my opinion, to be safe. Yeah. In I don't, world. yeah. I don't want to put unfair. I mean, that's your expectation. Expectations. It is. It is. I don't, I just don't want to go. I'm not ready to go there yet. We're, we're one day in. Let's see how it goes. Right. I, I think, I think he's going to do great with the portal. Uh, we're already kind of seeing some good returns there with, potential targets and things like that. So, um, but that's the expectation. And, and that's the great thing about his presser. He, he knows that he knows that mm. and he accepts it and he, mm. he's ready for the challenge. Yeah. I think I was listening to field of 68 and they mentioned with the transfer portal, you know, coach coaches leashes are just a lot different than they used to be. And right. he, they were saying mm -hmm. that maybe one reason why, you know, we didn't get as much action from the coaches that are out there as maybe we thought we would is because, you know, you go to Louisville, it's, you're going to have high expectations. And you saw like with TJ Otzelberger, he took Iowa state from like a four win team to the tournament the next season. So with yeah. the transfer portal, you can turn schools around a lot faster. So your yeah. leash might be a little shorter and that's not a function of it being Louisville or, you know, any other school, um, it's just a function of the world that we're living in right now. Like with the transfer portal, it doesn't take three or four years to build a team anymore. You can exactly. turn around a team in one season, you know. And Trace pointed that out in the chat, too. So thanks, Trace, for that comment. Uh, with the transfer portal and being able to utilize NIL these days, like you can turn it around fast. I mean, we saw Baylor completely revamp their roster a few years ago. Um, I mean, we've seen countless examples of that. Uh, in, in recent years of teams just completely revamping their entire roster and, and then being a competitive team the very next year. So it would not surprise me at all if he comes in here and then next thing you know, we're in that bubble discussion next year. Uh, in, in fact, I, I think that uh, that is something that I think could very well happen. So, Yeah. Sure. Um, I will say when it comes to Coach Kelsey, like I said, I, I'm excited for the future. Um, there are things that still worry me and, and it'll be talked about throughout the summer. I'm sure and we'll, we'll have plenty more time, but um, one thing that I have noticed, and, and this is kind of my, this is kind of my main concern at the moment. Again, everyone that's listening, I'm not hating. I'm just yeah. saying um, his, I'm, I'm kind of big on analytics and Kim Palm and things of that nature. I, I really wasn't just a few years ago, but, Honestly, over this past year or two, like some of the guys have really kind of shown me Ken Palm and how that really translates to tournament success and things like that. And his Charleston Ken Palm numbers are, um, they're up and down. That's probably the best way to put it. So for an example, um, his offense yeah. this year was 52nd in adjusted offense efi efficiency, which I, I consider that good for, for Charleston. Um, defense was 179th, um, which I, I, I don't know. I really wanted to get into film breakdown today, but it's I had a rough week at work, man. I couldn't really find much clips and videos to really go over with you guys. I'm going to keep working on that, but 
it makes me wonder if he maybe needs to have some sort of an adjustment when it comes to his defensive philosophy. I know, I know a lot of people have said that he runs kind of pack line principal defense, which I know a lot of people, they hear pack line. They're just like, Oh God, I don't think, I don't think the pack line's a bad defense. Mm-hmm. I think it could work really well if you coach it and teach it well. But, and, and then in 2023, when Charleston was, that was probably his best season there. They were 78th in offense, which not, it's not great, but it's good, I guess. And then 67th in defense. And it, so it's, it's very up and down. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see how it translates. I know his tempo numbers are great. They're up in the they're in the upper echelon in terms of tempo. Um, we'll see. I, we're gonna have to wait till we get to the you know on court action, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited for the future, man. I, I'm just excited to get back to being excited about basketball. These yes. last two years have been so long, and I don't want to rehash that. But totally agree. I'm gonna be at game long. one. I've already decided. I, I'm I, gonna be there. I, I I I am too. I'm gonna I'm gonna be making. I want to be going back to the Yum Center, which is another thing. I haven't been to the Yum Center in years. My wife has never been to the Yum Center. I said this in a Discord. That'll be a really cool. Ago. That'll it's be so I cool. I was like, because like, this was you know a few months ago, I was like, man, I really want to make a trip. back. This was before I had even accepted a job to move back to Louisville. I was like, man, I really want to make a trip back to Louisville and show my wife the Yum Center. But I, the way things were going and like, you know, you had 4,000 people in the stands. It's like, I didn't want her to go to that atmosphere for her first game. Right. So now I'm really excited about the fact that, you know, we might have a bigger crowd and, and it's going to be something I can actually be proud to take her to. Oh, yeah. That, that's going to be so cool to show her the young. Um, I see Phil says, Ty, he will have better athletic players. Yeah, that's that's definitely the hope, right? I mean, no, that's not the right chat. And I, and I agree. I, I think he's going to recruit really well here. Everything, I, everything that we've heard, um, I know we, I think you all talked about what Travis mentioned to us on Wednesday. Like he, he's a good recruiter, man. And, and with the, yeah. with the funds that we have, the NIL yeah. pool, I agree. He's going to have better athletic players. Hopefully that translates to, you know, uh, better defensive numbers and things like that. Maybe that's what he's missing. That might be. Sure. Yeah. Ty, one other thing about, you know, the numbers being kind of up and down. And one thing I've noticed, like, you said, I mean, you know, it'd be nice to get into some film, but it, you really got to search for it, man. Like, yeah. there's not, there's not a lot out there. Um, and yeah. you know, I tried to do like a Spark oh, Notes like version where uh, you could look, you know, like here's a breakdown of his defense. Like, there's just not a lot out there. But one thing I've thought about with you know his uh, numbers being up and down. Um, He runs, like you said, like his tempo numbers are off the charts, right? Like, I think that makes a lot of sense if you watch his presser. Like, I'd be shocked if they didn't, right? So um, I think he runs a high tempo offense. And I think the, um, you know, the thing is, like with a lot of these lower teams or like lower uh, conference teams, they can hang with the big boys for like half, half Mm -hmm. a game, Mm -hmm. three-fourths of a game, and then they just get out work that last quarter. You see it all the time in March Madness, right? Like, oh, there's this huge upset, and then after halftime, it's just like a blowout. So I think um, that's one thing. Like, having better depth will make a huge difference for him. Like, being able to recruit not just five really good players, but eight, nine. I mean, he he literally subs out ten guys some games. Like, he'll literally play a full ten guys. Mine's good. Yeah, exactly. So I think yeah. having a uh, full roster and like, you know, that second line being just as good or not much of a drop off will make a big difference for a lot of those numbers. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, did you see Kyle? Uh, Josh he said, I'm really, I'm really pumped. Shock yeah, lost. I had that on the screen already. Um, yeah, well, hey, hey, if Painter wins, I don't know. I mean, it's they're looking. Only- they're looking like they're going to finish that one out too. It's still a little yeah. bit of time, but Slava yeah. said that uh, we don't have the schedule right, and that's correct. The schedule's not out yet, so um, we don't know when that first game is going to be. I just know that I'm going to make a point to be there. Now, when I say the first game, I'm still undecided if that means the first exhibition game or the first regular season game because you know how is exhibition game. That's kind of meh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the last, well, the last two years, <laughs> the last, it's not eventful. The last <laughs> two years, you're getting your money's worth, but well, we're pretending like that didn't exist. So yeah, right, right. Um, no, I, I it's going to be hard to really replicate the the last few years of exhibition games. So. And Jeremy Radford's ask, asking when the board will end. I don't actually know, and we don't have Connor around tonight to ask. Yeah, so that's definitely yeah, a Connor question. Yeah. yeah. Slava said we need Nick Nurse and Chris Paul to publicly and publicly endorse them. I think didn't they kind of do did. that? Like, yeah, I was yeah. about to say. I think Chris Paul put out a little something that was, you know, nice to read and positive about PK and. Um, I think I thought Nick Nurse did too, or or at least he said that Nick Nurse story in the presser. I think. Yeah, and I don't even know. Yeah. Do we want to get into the presser? Are you guys ready? Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, and Ty had some clips. I think he wanted to share. So I definitely got one. We could probably look for more, but this was my favorite uh, clip from the presser, and for Ash, who hasn't seen any of it. This is going to be pretty cool. I think Ash is going to like this. Yes. Let me pull this up. I think Josh knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yep. How, how does this look on screen? We good here? Okay. That looks yeah. good. I have this recurring dream. Okay. And a couple of the speeches I've given in my life, I've talked about this, but it happened again last night and I got a great night's sleep. He offered me the job. Obviously, the board of trustees had to approve it, but I felt really good. Last couple nights, I didn't sleep really well. I wanted that call. I wanted to be here bad. But when I fell asleep, that dream came back. And good news, I was at the early gates. That's a good deal. I walk in, St. Peter meets me. He goes, welcome. I go, awesome, man. I, this is awesome. The ultimate, I'm here. He goes, let me show you around. We walk down the street. Start showing me a few neighborhoods. And there's a house out in the diff distance. And it has kind of a red... And then a navy blue tint and kind of a Jayhawk down there on the door. And he goes, man, that, that's where Bill Self lives. Walk down a little bit further and there's a cul-de-sac. Kind of two houses on the end of that deal. And there's <laughs> amazing blue one and there's a dark navy one. And he says, yep, that's Scott Drew and Dusty May. They, they live there. Like, <laughs> it's ironic, but that, that's cool. That's cool. I, I so wish we could get Josh's face right here when he looks at me. Yeah, I know. We walk down further and further and further, and we come to this big deal. I'm talking impressive. Big, big crib. Manicured. Bentley. It's blue. It's got a UK on it. Burn that thing down. He goes, that's where <laughs> Coach Cal lives. Good for him. It's cool. We go farther down. I'm talking whew, out in the distance. The moonlight's hitting it perfect at dusk. The biggest deal you've ever seen. And it is a stinking wow. And there's red all over that deal. And there's a big cardinal on it. And I'm like, St. Peter, that's me? He goes, no. I go, Danny Crum? No. Rick Patino? He said, son, that's where God lives. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. That was Come good. On. That was so good. Uh, Dude, we were. Um, well, we were. I, I, we were. We were like live watching in the Discord, man. And it was oh, just that, we, it, that place went nuts when he said that. Um, so good, man. You could just feel the energy. You could feel it. If it, it, it feels so genuine. Like I I know when we had talked when we had like talked about it just amongst ourselves, not on here, I don't think. I think a lot of people had questions like, is 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 it real? Like is he really like this the whole time? And I've seen so many videos and so many interviews, and it is, it's real, and and it's it's different it's so much different than the last few years and it feels good, man. Like it, it, you, you can't help, but not feel it. You know, there's probably only really one thing that he could have said that would have made the whole press conference better. And that's it. Fuck you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> 
if he had done that, people would have been taking their shirts off in there and it would have been wild. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, there was just so many, like, I think in the Discord, we were talking about like our favorite moments of his speech. And this one, Ty, I mean, that had to be probably the most common one that people said. Mm -hmm. But like, there were so many. I mean, you know, he touched on KP a little bit, and you could feel the crowd's energy kind of drop a little bit. Like, they were like, that's ah, too soon. You know, I don't know. Yeah. And I think you could kind of feel that tension. But I honestly kind of like that he did that because, you know, KP is a former player. You know, I don't want to touch on him too much again. I know there's still a lot of bad blood there. But, like, I just – I don't want to shun anybody out. Like, he was just so inviting, and his energy was so mm -hmm. positive. Um, you know, I just thought that was great, but he made a comment. There was a question. And I think it was, um, Jeff White. I can't remember who asked the question, but somebody asked him, um, you know, KP said the program was broken. He said it was so broken when I got here, it's going to take four years to rebuild. What do you think? Like, you know, and he goes ready. Yeah. Ready. yeah that, I saw like, that quote and that actually got me. Answer. Yeah. Like. I, I literally, like, you can give me an hour. I couldn't think of a better answer than that. You, know? you don't get the rebuild here. What are you talking about? Like, right. We're ready to go. Yeah. I was looking for the nearest brick wall to run through personally. That's, <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. Well, there's yeah, plenty of them down on belt map. So just go right on down there, you know? Sure. Uh, I'm looking over and I see Phil says, was Ty Lar the only player in the building? I don't, I don't know. I, we've seen, yeah, there's too things. much contradicting stuff out there. I don't there's too much contradiction. Like people who who's here, who's not. I, I'm pretty sure Sky wasn't here. I think he's out of town. And um, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. Yeah, it's too early because you always see whenever you have a coaching change, you always see a bunch of players, you know, say they're either staying or they say they're leaving. And then a few weeks go by and next thing you know, they're changing their mind. So even some of the guys in the portal now, you may see three weeks from now that they change their mind and come back. So it's still too raw to know exactly what's going to happen with these guys. So I'm just taking a wait and see uh, attitude in regards to what players on the roster are going to be back. And, and we'll see that over time. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to heat up for sure. The next, the next week or two really. Um but I mean, as of right now, it's only it's only Tyler and 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 Manny. So, yeah, the room is yeah. scarce, man. The room is scarce. Well, out of who's left, I mean, it, I, like or who entered the transfer portal, like I really wanted BBH to stay. Like he oh, just yeah. played so well to mm -hmm. you know down the stretch of the season. But like I think he's already visited NC State. He's got another visit coming up with Indiana. So I think it's going to be a long shot to keep him. So that one hurts yeah. a little bit. But like y'all said, I mean, it's going to take time. You know, we don't know who all is going to stay. But uh, we did get a little clip of his uh, first uh, – Kelsey's first conversation with the team. And, I mean, it sounds like it was even more intense than the press conference. I can go, so, I can go find that, actually. Give me a second. Yeah, I haven't seen that. that. And I know yeah. there was a lot of people questioning on, you know, message boards and, and Discord and different things like that about players from College of Charleston and if there was anybody that would be that they might be interested in bringing with them. And, and I don't I, – I will say I, I didn't see a single game of College of Charleston this year, so I couldn't speak on that. But what I will speak on is because there was – whenever we thought Dusty May was going to be the guy, there was instantly, you know, two or three guys that everybody's like, I want that guy to come with him. But what a lot of folks don't realize is – there's a big jump between the level of competition that Florida Atlantic is playing and what College of Charleston was playing. I mean, that Florida Atlantic's kind of in a mid-major league. Really, truthfully, you know, College of Charleston's in a low-major league. So yeah. I, I would be very surprised if there's anybody that would come and be more than, like, you know, like, depth, to be mm -hmm. honest. Well, there's there's rumors of um I think it's is it Rain? Is that how you pronounce it? Rain, Rain Smith Smith or Smith. Um, Smith Smith. We'll figure we'll figure that out. Um I just can't imagine there's any like he's Australian online starters. I mean he could Come this on. this Smith Dude, he, he can shoot play. it. He yeah. can play, he yeah. can shoot it for real. Oh, yeah. Um so he's definitely one that I think a lot of people are looking at. 
Of course, I don't think he's entered the portal yet. Or no, he has, right? He did or he did enter the portal already. Yeah, he did. And there's yeah. there's some rumors around him, so everybody keep your fingers crossed. But yeah, yeah. it sounds like it's positive for us. That's so. definitely one. I think there was another like uh he Kelsey actually got a four star recruit at yeah. Charleston. Uh like a yeah. forward, I think. There's rumors of him and then uh, another guard. I think his name is Kobe Rogers, I want to say. He's the um, one who blew out his knee, right? Yes, which sad, yeah, sadly blew yeah. out his knee in that game against Bama. Trace, I actually was thinking this very thing, so I'm glad you said that. I, I, I was surprised that Huntley Hatfield at least didn't hear out the coaches. And he, and he might. There's he rumors might. that he might still come back. I think he's just weighing out his options. But anytime – Oh, and then I just say to be patient, so <laughs> – <laughs> right but anytime you visit what us the fans do yeah. i actually yeah. have that uh that tweet with the video from the meeting if you oh, want nice. to play that yeah yeah let me get rid of the banners here or the overlays all right bring it up there we go the first film session that we would do the first team meeting that we would do the first repetition in the weight room when we start working out first individual workout Every one of those is the most important moment in the history of the program. Why? Because it's the next thing. Mike Tomlin for the Pittsburgh Steelers, he always says the standard is the standard. That makes unbelievable sense to me. Because it's a simple saying that says, I will not fail. Where do you think most people are? If there's few over there in the loop, you over there in the winning where are most teams most people most organizations where are they at somewhere in the middle it's called the mountain of average i ain't interested in that pardon my bad language i ain't one percent one percent that's what you're fighting to be if you want to be special and you want to be elite one percent if winning was easy everybody could do it but the fight to be in the one percent there's a way to go about it. That's how I rock. I love my players. I back my players. I will do anything for them. But I hold them accountable. Hey, he's intense, man. That's awesome. He's That's intense, actually really man. good. We love it. That's he's really good. The, the standard is the standard. Yep. The mountain of average. I, I can't. Right. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't heard that one yet. But that's good. Whoa. It's good. It makes sense. Yeah. Um, I'm ready. I'm dude. I'm ready, man. I'm so ready. I'm so, I don't. Know. I don't want to wish football away because football is going to be fun. So I'm not. Football gonna is going to be so fun. Like, but awesome. yeah. Yeah. Can you guys imagine? Like in October, we're going to have football. Like that crossover season. Dude, oh, yeah. it's the best. You got NFL, NCAA football, NC. You got NBA. It's you got everything. It's just yeah. the best. I'm so we can now, actually look forward to the crossover again. Now all we got is freaking baseball. <laughs> One of us is oh, having I, I knew you. Will Smith, by the way, signing a 10 year contract hey, this week. How about congratulations, that? Congratulations, W. Dude. W. Will Smith. Yeah, dude is going yeah. to the bank. He's collecting. I, I'm really happy for Cardinal alum Will Smith signing that big yeah. deal with the Dodgers. I mean, w. for the Dodgers to step up and do that, like that just shows you what they think of him. And for yeah, the most well-run organization in baseball to do that—that's that's cool. Hey, Ty, this should be like your favorite time of the year. Like the Jets Super Bowl is usually around. Okay, the, NFL the draft, Jets right? Josh, Super Bowl. That, <laughs> Josh, that was that was mean. That was unnecessary. <laughs> hey, I. I, that's where I thought the Packers were headed. I thought he was going to go in October. You know, the Orioles making the World Series. Dude, yeah, I'm a huge Orioles fan. Did you see that game the other day, Ash? It was crazy, man. I um, no, I did not. I didn't either. That's the that's the joke. <laughs> I didn't. I I don't know, man. I I it's not that I hate baseball, but gee, dude, it's so boring to watch. I just can't, dude. Unless I'm there, like I cannot. If I'm it. there, that's different, right? If I'm yeah. there, it's different. No yeah. lie, I will watch more than 200 baseball games between now and October on on TV. On TV. Dude, that's, oh, man, you're a better man than me. I will watch none. That's a jail sentence, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I, I think I'd rather My be in so mad because every oh. night when we go to bed, I turn on the – I click the MLB TV uh, app on the Roku, and, and so she has to watch baseball in bed 
as I fall asleep. <laughs> you see where Kyle says video cuts off before he tells yeah, you. Yeah, that, like, so oh, that, that, that was rumored, or I've seen it posted somewhere that um one of the players was not paying attention when uh, Coach Kelsey started, and he he kind of got on his ass a little bit and said, "I your eyes are going to be on me or pay attention." So, mm-hmm. oh, dude, we added it. We have it. Yeah, oh, dude, that's yeah. awesome. We added it for I the last game, dude. I was so I stoked. We, I didn't know we had the <laughs> Ty's reaction. Now it was worth playing it. <laughs> that's I didn't awesome. know yes. we had it. Yes. Well, dude, and I <laughs> knew I was like, I'll. I was like, Kyle's gonna hate this because you guys know I posted it in the Discord probably like 500 times. Like, <laughs> every time anyone said anything, I'm like, yeah, throw it on there. <laughs> I didn't know we had it. That's so good. Yes. yes. Well, whenever I played it the other night, this was the reaction. Like, uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, they that's said, so good. So, like, some rain. So they said Pat Kelsey can do 75 pull ups. Did you guys know that? Like, I, they, uh, I don't. I wouldn't doubt it. It's in shape, right? Yeah, but like I heard, that's one of his odd talents. Is like he can do a ton of pull ups. So like it's kind of his thing. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt it. I would not doubt it. <laughs> He's just uh, B69, it, it again. or B nine B nine E says play it. I'm not sure what he means by play. I think it, he so. means the GIF. He wants the GIF, man. Give him which the GIF. one? We play three. The the man, Pat Kelsey. Kelsey Pat slam. Kelsey. There, there we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we have that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, dude. I oh. uh, like when we were on the fence about Kelsey. There's definitely some people that saw that gif and were like, "I'm out, dude. I'm all the way out." But now that you know him and like you kind of get his personality and you're all in, like you're like, "Oh, I love that gif." That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's really yeah. I first saw that GIF and I was like, oh man, that's so cringe. And now I'm, I can't get enough of it. I love it. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> funny how it you you switch up so quick on that. But so, so y'all, y'all, y'all are going to be uh, pumped in the Discord. I got a new GIF coming. We'll throw it on. We'll throw it on the channel too. But um, Pat Kelsey does some weird thing where he like your shoe can't fall off or like come and grab oh, your shoe dude. and punch it as far as he can. And you so we're try that? Awesome. yeah, we got to have it. So that's give going. me, a, give me a sec, play with chat. Let me see if I can find that. That's actually funny. Dude. It's awesome. Yeah. He, he literally grabs this dude's shoe in practice and just launches it as far as he can. And I'm just like, that. yeah, you guys know I love a character. So like, I just thought it was hilarious. Okay. Yeah. I, this I found is- it. I found it. Did you? Yes. Yes. This is so funny. Let me share this again. Hold on. B9E, no, I don't. We don't have, like I said, that was a rumored thing. I don't, we don't have a clip of him tearing into Yeah, we don't have that. Nor, nor do I think U of L would put that out on, no, on social. Right. Um, and then also tonight, uh, we were, we mentioned this earlier and I forgot to, to bring it up, I'm going to post the link if anybody wants to hop on and give their takes tonight yeah. uh, about the hire uh, or whatever they want to give a take on. Uh, you might want to give a take on Will Smith's new contract. You know, I'd love that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. just feel free to hop Ash on and give love a that. take. Yeah. All right. Here's the. Uh... Oh, let me get rid of the overlays. Oh, uh, yep. Sorry. I should have waited. That's all right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose your shoe. Don't lose your shoe. Oh. Watch this. <laughs> so, hey, uh, that's the one mulligan because the last time it happened, it was to me. So I'm not yelling at you, but next time, that absolves me of any sin on shoes. No more. I'm throwing it outside. Because the last time it happened, it was to me. <laughs> oh, no. He lost his own. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't run for it. They're going to launch that outside. Dude, I love it. 
That's so good. That is good. So yeah, so I gotta get a gift for that. That's, that's, the shoe. that's good stuff. <laughs> Kyle, I don't need to think about you in the hot tub, buddy. Yeah, Come on, oh, yeah. It's a family show. Hey, this is a family, <laughs> family show, man. We do we are not going Take the vacation, uh, hot tub dude. streams. Yeah. You know, I did hear from three people today say that they had signed up for the 502 circle today for the first time. Yeah, so yeah, that's good did to you hear. hear about that. Uh, yesterday, they said was the most mo- single day amount of uh, money they've had poured on poured into the 502 circle in one day. I totally and also, believe it. Uh, basketball season tickets. I can't remember if it was like the most new. Se- I, there, I, I'll, I'm going to mess up the stat, but they also had like a record day as well. So like, yeah. Enthusiasm's yeah. there, boys. And we also heard a rumor about, you know, I won't get into it too much because I don't know how much they want to share, but one of the popular like Louisville forums posted that there might be big news on Monday. So something else to look forward to in regards to like donations or. Um, well, and I totally well. believe all that because uh, most of the guys on our on our channel that um, you know, we all started this together with, we have all been primarily football first guys, uh, uh despite the, the, the conversation for the last month or so. Um, and, but yet the numbers reflected in our statistics for our channel, our top viewing shows are always our basketball shows. So that just shows you what our, our fan base cares the most about at the end of the day, regardless of how many of us, um, say we're football fans first. What moves the needle at the University of Louisville is basketball. It'll be interesting. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ty. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say it'll be interesting to see what happens with donations for like football and basketball or like the split once basketball takes off. Like, I'm just like thinking out loud like, is are people going to donate more to basketball or football or what's going to happen there? Um, cause I, I'm so in on football too, dude. Like I, I was eating mm-hmm. up all the spring practice things we were here and I know we'll probably get into that later, but, um, yeah, dude, I'm so excited for both. I just, I hope that we can sustain the success and just honestly build on it. Right. Like mm-hmm. get even more money pumped into the school and just, um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting though. Did any of you guys watch the spaces uh, that he joined last I hopped night? In there? I hopped in I there and listened to him. And we had somebody was trying to scare him away with trying to be his freaking real estate. Real <laughs> I'm like, dude, you got Slava. Slava, were you in there trying to? Vince, Vince McMahon, Jeff. Yeah. 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 You got to play it. Got to play it. Yeah. We're, we're... <laughs> that must have been Slava in the, in the spaces. Are you still yeah, with us? We're not. <laughs> yeah. He threw like, his real estate company in there. But like, the, the guy ain't even been here a day. <laughs> right. Well, the thing that Jody said that was kind of cool was like Pat Kelsey in the middle of those spaces, which honestly, like it was kind of messy. I think it's hard with fans because like you're not used to asking questions and like being in front of a camera or like being in front of a mic. Um, so like it did get like a little uh, a little messy at times, but Pat Kelsey still managed to hit on all of the big donors. He's like, mm-hmm. they're talking about working out. And he's like, make sure you go to planet fitness. And he made sure to mention the gold house. Like, dude, he, he just gets it. Like, he I, does. I, love he gets it. It. I, like I said, um, I know, I know it sounds bad when I woke up Wednesday and I heard that Patino Jr. was out and is going to be Pat Kelsey. I'm not going to lie. I was like, man, I just don't know. I'm so worried. I'm so afraid of this. And, and it it took forty five minutes of a presser for me to be like, wow, I was freaking out for nothing. Like obviously, obviously, what comes, what matters most is on the court success. Mm-hmm. And and right. and right now, there's nothing he can do about that. That time will come, but everything so far, it's been a day. But everything so far, he is crushing it. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. As exactly, and yeah. he's doing so great at it. That presser was mm-hmm. awesome. Jumping in spaces, by the way, if anyone that doesn't know, that was Drew Diener's space. I think you can actually go to Drew's Twitter maybe and find a – you can play the recording of it. Um, but to be – dude, he was on spaces at 1030 at night on a Thursday. 
right with and 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 to and if people have any questions on how crazy this fan base still is there was like over 2000 people there 10 30 at night on a thursday on the twitter space yeah. and, and he he just gets it man and you can tell what i like so much and uh, it's gonna sound really cheesy and corny and that's fine it almost made me tear up a little bit because you can tell just how much he cares and how much he appreciates this opportunity in this job. I know yeah. when we went on Saturday night, that was a rough watch. I, we were so down bad Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And I said a lot of things. And a lot of those things, I still somewhat think. But we were down bad, man. And, and for him to come in, he, he, knows, he knows how important this job is. He gets it. He embraces it, and he's ready to rock, man. That's what he said. I'm ready to rock, mm -hmm. and and that's just so. It's so refreshing to hear. Um, it's going to come down to to how we look on the court. I get it. You don't you don't win games by winning press conferences, but this was a a win in a different way. So very true. Yeah, and I have an admission to make, <laughs> and I said it last night in the Discord, but I'll, I'll repeat it here. Um, somebody posted a message saying that uh, the Pat Kelsey was in in the Twitter Spaces, and I read it and I thought, okay, because I read it as Pat Kelly being <laughs> in the Twitter Space, and so I thought that they were talking about our co-host Pat uh, that's on. Uh, he was on Wednesday night with us, and so I keep I, I keep reading Pat Kelsey and just thinking of Pat Kelly. Uh, so I had that messed up and I just didn't even think it was, uh, you know, I wasn't like, Oh, I have to go listen right now uh, mm -hmm. to what coach is thinking. Cause I wasn't thinking of coach yet. So my bad on that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I, you know, honestly, like my dad's the one who got me into Louisville basketball. Like he grew up in Louisville. Like I, that was how me and him bonded. Like that was our first thing that we really started watching. Like the, um, the final four, uh, Patino's first Final Four with all those guys like Taekwon Dean and those guys was like the first thing that I remember watching with my dad and really like, you know, him treating me like an equal and being like, isn't this awesome? Like, mm -hmm. so I asked him, like, the first thing I did was call him after the presser because he usually he's not super technological. Like, I didn't think he would watch the press conference. And I asked him, I was like, hey, what were your thoughts of the press conference? And he goes, the only bad thing I have to say about Pat Kelsey is he needs some new glasses. He's like, other than that, and the only reason he said that is because they're falling down his face, but he's like, other than that, I'm all in. And I was shocked. I was like, seriously? Like, you're good to go? And so that was great. Like, that was a great moment, you know, for um, me and my dad. We just haven't had a lot of those basketball-wise in a long time. So it was just like, like, we were both just juiced up. So it was awesome. You bring up a good point, and I'm going to also kind of talk uh, history of like that, too. So I'm the same way as you, Josh. Um, my my I remember when I was a kid, when my dad took me to my first Louisville game. I was maybe five, six years old, and it was Rick Patino's. I want to say is Patino's first year, maybe second. <clears throat> and we were playing, I think, Temple in the NIT. And I'll always remember that game, like as a kid, stepping into Freedom Hall and like the smells. By the way, I can still smell Freedom Hall right now. I oh, know I miss that. I I, uh, miss I, I do too. I do. Too. I actually, the Yum Center is beautiful. It is. And I wouldn't change it. I, but it I miss is. Freedom yep. Hall. I, I miss yep. Freedom Hall. I think most fans feel the same way. But well, like I was saying, as a kid. I, I fell in love, man. I have no allegiance to U of L. I didn't go to U of L. I'm not an alumni, not a student. I was too stupid to get into U of L. I'm just going to be honest. But that's not true. Don't say uh, that. Uh, uh, well, it's it's the truth. But I fell in love at such an early age, and I'm a fan at heart, man. And emotions get the best of us a lot of times. I'm not here to rehash what happened this week, but emotions get the best of us and we all feel so passionately about this place and this team for various different reasons and i'll always remember just walking into freedom hall and watching Louisville basketball play for the first time and, and i fell in love at an early age and, and that hasn't changed 20 something years later so 
Um, and to see that Pat Kelsey in one day acknowledges that he even talked about how like the fan base, they're opinionated and, and, and they're rabid and they're crazy. And he said, bring it on. I'm going to mm-hmm. need you on the ship. Um, it's, it's, it's cool to see. It gives you, it gives me chills a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It gives mm-hmm. me chills. Right. Um, it, it's just, it's refreshing. It's, it's a breath of fresh air. I'm excited for the future. We'll see how it goes, but man, am I excited. He he did it great. His first day, I'm not sure it could have got any better. So time will tell how it goes. No, I totally agree. And they're just I, I just sitting here why you you had mentioned Freedom Hall. Now I just keep thinking about it and like look at look at the comments saying the German roasted nuts. That's yeah, yeah. yeah I it's can cool. still smell I remember exactly where that stand was on the lower level. Mm-hmm. Um, I just the whole building before, smells like it too. The thing that was cool is before the game, right before tip off of the game, because of the way Freedom Hall was originally designed more for equestrian events, the end zones they had to pull those out, and so they were like a pullout. They're not; they weren't bleachers, of course. They were seats, but it was like a pullout stanch this pullout thing, and so like people would stomp on it. And there was one guy on the end that was opposite from where the team would come in and out. And before big games, he would get uh, the CARDS going and he would really get the crowd into it, stomp it on that, on those, on that metal floor. And it it was, it would always get the crowd just really going right before the tip off of the game. And that's just something I always remember uh, I think on the message boards they said that guy's name was like Rob Hickerson or something. Um, is who that was? I never met him. I just I always saw that name on the message boards uh, at the time as being the guy that would do that. And the characters from Freedom Hall on the end where the team would run in and out, there was always the guy that would do the thing where he ran side to side, spelling out C A R D S when they when they played uh, a certain song. Oh, and then Anthony Eason, he's talking about. Um, uh, oh shoot! What was that guy's name? I- I'm blanking on his name. Um, he so he had problems with his legs and he got really strong upper body. He used to do like handstands on the rails. And I actually I went. Uh, so I used to take. So I'm taking a lot of time right now just because I'm. Really nice. did, but um, he was actually a super nice guy, and I'm mad that I forget his name. But um, he used to go on. I used to do those bus trips that you could do where you could go to away games. And he used to be on those all the time, and he would start doing them at away games and get and the, the, you know, the home team would start getting mad about it and, and tell him to stop. But man, I'm blanking on his name. It's gonna make me mad. I'm gonna have to think about that. And, and try I'm sure, to I'm sure somebody in the chat is gonna is gonna. Know and, and I what? apologize for just going on like a five minute monologue talking about the different <laughs> characters that were in Freedom Hall, uh, but that was such a big part of my uh, childhood and growing up years too. So. Um, well, anyway, man. we you bring it back to current day, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, what about the uh, epic send out for Freedom Hall, though? Like, that's one of my favorite Louisville memories. It was Kyle oh, Scherer, was there, number one Syracuse, and just like hitting threes and don't get out. That's the guy's name. Sadat. That was awesome. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. No, I, but yeah. So, anyways, um, back to Pat Kelsey. Um, you know, something to be excited about going forward. Um, you know, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. I think the link was posted um, in the in the uh, chat. So if anybody wants yeah, to talk again. about Pat Kelsey, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, give us yeah. your take on Pat Kelsey or reminisce about Freedom Hall or whatever you want to come on and give a take about. We'd love to have some new voices come on the pod and and just share some some thoughts. Hey, yeah, guys, join in. If, you, if you're afraid of... Showing your face. You don't have to let your you don't have to allow the camera. Just get in here and talk yeah, to us, man. Let us know what you think. Awesome. This is what Friday nights are for, man. It's to hear from you guys. Uh, yeah. We we do the Wednesdays where we talk and talk and talk. Let's hear from you all. So um, let's see here. And then uh Josh was asking in the um, in the private chat, well, what's the standings uh, regarding the the bracket challenge? I honestly I didn't fill out a bracket, so I, I'm not sure where the standings are on that. 
but I know we had the third banner pod bracket Josh, challenge. Do you have that? Do you have that pulled up? Um, I don't, but I can pull it up really quick. Um, yeah, we don't need to honest. look at where I'm at on the list. We'll yeah. just show the top. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I haven't looked. I know yeah. on day one, I was in last place with Pat and Kyle. I was like, all right, this is crazy. I think that's where I'm at now. I had Iowa State because nobody picked Iowa State. So I was like, oh, if I pick them, you know, like, or if they win, like, I'll, hey, I'll do better. But uh, B9E, so no, you can't. But if you if you go get us on YouTube. Uh, yeah, you got to be um, on YouTube. Yeah, got to be on YouTube. You, you click that, like, copy that link. If you're on your phone, you can do it from your phone. Just go to your Safari, put that link in, and you can join. And like I said, you don't have to use your camera if you yeah, don't you want just to. Talk. Use audio only. But yeah, if you want to talk, man, come in, come in and talk to us. Seriously. Give us your take. No different than calling yes, into the local radio or anything like that. I always forget that you can't do it straight through uh, X. So I almost yeah. try not That's to call weird. it Twitter anymore because it's been months and months. But yeah. Which see X is where we get like I think we get more, more listeners and viewers. It's just easier to find. But okay, so I'll read off like maybe the top six brackets right now. Is uh, Jenny McClanahan? I Jenny? hope I pronounced that right. Jenny, you're you're killing it. She has uh, Purdue. I like that pick as well. Um, <laughs> second or tied for first is Drew Bayera. Again, I, I apologize. I'm not great with reading names. Um, he's in second place, tied with Jenny. And then third place is uh, ESPN fan, 2132, and then a bunch more numbers. <laughs> so, if you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> so if you have your bra- if you have all those numbers memorized, I, I'm not going to read them all off, but you're in third. Uh, uh, Celis, Celis Picks is number four. And then – uh, and Tardanico, and then that's I think that's the top five. So, if any of those you guys are looking good, um, it looks like there's a big clump that's tied there for third. So, you know, I think with this final uh weekend here coming up, maybe we'll be able to separate those a little bit. But yeah, congrats to you guys because I my bracket looks awful. Nick, Dude, these were man. the leaders on the uh, third banner pod bracket challenge that that Josh was reading off. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I should have gotten into that. a little. Well, further. wait, wait, hold on. I'm looking at the bracket challenge. I'm going to put this up on the screen. Do we have time? We don't have anybody waiting, yeah. right? No. Uh-uh. Josh, what are you? Are we looking at the same thing? Yeah. Is he in the wrong bracket? I don't are know. One bracket? No. Is he the names you read off? I can't no. see him. What happened? Am I doing something wrong? No, here's uh I don't know. Okay, by oh, the way, was... what the hell? Drew Daniel Parker, are you 95%? <laughs> That's pretty good. Dude, what the heck, Daniel? You So, I accidentally pulled up my work bracket. So, none of those brackets <laughs> 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 so, so <laughs> I was about to say, what are you looking at? My bad. <laughs> That's funny. Daniel, how five work? star, five star, five star hey. in my book. <laughs> how is Daniel? Daniel has like all of these right, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I was oh, I looking at I was looking at mine. I was like, wait a minute. Those and I love that name. he's reading these off and he didn't even know that they were his co-workers. No. Hey, no. hey Josh, how does e, how's uh ESPN fan 126 in the in the office? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Oh shoot. Well, okay. Fake news Josh over here is giving us the wrong. <laughs> The wrong standings. <laughs> this is the real standings. By the way, nice. Dude, I, don't nice know. I don't know. Josh was making up names so he could win the challenge. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> Dude, look at my look at my standing. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we got so uh Daniel, 
Daniel, if you're in here, man, look, keep up the good work. You're you're crushing 95%. it. Ninety five percent. That's that's impressive. Seriously, that's impressive, dude. Nick, this you is sixteen percent. Oh, dude. Hey, I see Tron up here. He's in the top seven. Tron's still fighting. I Tron. see Ray. We know Ray. Big Tron knows Ray. Ball. But hey, before we like go any further, when it comes to the bracket challenge, by the way, remember if you're going to if you're if you win, you're going to get a gift card. But the only way to claim it is if we you have a are guest host. If you are a subscriber to the YouTube channel, okay. So just keep that in mind. You got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. How are the woods? I'm out of the hot tub, boys. Oh, boy. <laughs> Good, because I didn't need to see any of that. I was gonna say we were gonna have to switch. We were gonna have to go over to Twitch if you were gonna be in the hot tub. I was making go threats. Walking your dog down the road or anything like that, you know. Um. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. I I was actually gonna. I was making threats like, hey, you're gonna get me in a hot tub if y'all don't come on here. But nobody seemed phased by it. But hey, you know, I'm hoping we get a commitment this weekend. That would really put things over the top. That's what oh, I'm waiting on next. That would be huge, sure. man. And, and I'd love it to be like, yeah, I'd like it to be like that that uh, Smith guy, I think his name is, out of College of Charleston. But I, if if you could get like a stud that averages about twenty points a game from, I've seen a couple of guys he's in on, a couple of local ones too that he is hoping to hear something back from. But somebody like that would be even better because I I, I kind of expect a couple of guys to come in from College of Charleston. But if he can get couple of studs man i've been trying to sneak off and and keep updated on the side <laughs> while, while you know, staying invested in the family vacation yeah. i think I, i've i've heard or seen from different places that um the coastal carolina kid i the name escapes me at the moment that's the say, one i really I want to say his last name is meyer maybe yeah um, he's from kentucky he is yeah and uh i think i've heard that we that's a real possibility but we'll see jacob meyer i think is his name yeah i think that's it and then the warwick from northern from nku would be would be real nice so so side note but i'm really bummed because i had a video a compilation video of all your all stinky shaka comments and first weekend (laughs) And what I was going to do is is I don't usually smoke anything, but I had a cigar that I bought. I was going to like light up a cigar and smoke it. Here's the fail. So I was like, well, I got to smoke the cigar. So I'll get in the hot tub. I'm like, I need to make sure that my cigar stays out of the hot tub. But I forgot I put my lighter in my pocket of my trunks when I walked outside. Uh, it's just obviously somebody that never smokes anything. And I got my lighter wet. So now I've got a cigar, Marquette lost, and I'm on a pod with you losers. So you were <laughs> so you were going to Stephen A. Smith, uh, Sprite, basically I, with the scar. I was I I had a lot to load it, but you know, hey, well, that's funny you not, mentioned that because I had a Stephen A. Smith <laughs> video ready for you if they had <laughs> lost awesome. in the first week. I figured he did. I figured he did, yeah. and that's why I was like, no, no, no. I said yeah. I, I was thinking. I actually literally that's why I did. I was like, what would what is Ty doing? Because I said I never believed you when you said you weren't ever going to say a word. I was like, I, I'm not buying that garbage. And then I was like, you know, he could end up being quiet on the Discord, and boom, video out of nowhere. That's exactly what I was going to do. Exactly. <laughs> I so, I was like, so because I thought you would do that, I was like, I, I got I got to be on top of this, and I got to have a video for him ready. And then neither one of us won. It's you a stalemate. Been- you remember the Stephen A. Smith video when Dallas lost and it pans, the camera slowly pans over to him, yeah, and just busting out laughing. I had, yeah. that, I had that ready to go on tap. I had you and Josh like a bunch of times, just dog and shock about when oh, I was yeah. in the fourth grade, and you know all these and stinky shock. I had a bunch of stinky shock, stinky shock. Then I had like the group chat where I had stinky shock search just scrolling on screen, and then it was gonna be like me saying, "I guarantee you, you will make a lead eight, guaranteed." And then I was gonna like pop out with a cigar and, and just like smoke in front of this lake out here. Now I just have a cigar and a wet lighter, and then the, the, a fail. <laughs> I, you could have had that. You could have had that if you're on the painter squad, right? Because I'm pretty sure they're still in it. Like I don't, I don't know. I didn't get a watch, but maybe somebody could put it in the chat. Like, did Purdue win? Oh yes, but postseason painter. 
postseason painter has to make a final four. He's had two good of teams. He's never made a final four, so he's got to yeah. make it. Yeah. No, but they Purdue looks pretty tough. I But like you said, Kyle, I was nervous as hell during that first Purdue game when it was, like, tight at halftime. I was like, if they lose to a 16 seed, I will never hear the end. Like I would hear this. Really wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it would be off. I would never let you down. Man, my hot tub hair is out of control, but that's cool. Um <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to it, guys. I mean, I feel like he's you know, obviously it's early and you don't want to get too caught up in the honeymoon stage, but he's crushed everything that you could possibly crush in the in the open, you know, in the first weekend of being hired. So or the first week I should say. I'm getting my days confused out here, but First few days of hire, he's he's done everything you could ask for. He's reaching out to donors that haven't heard from people for years, and he's reaching out to those guys. And he's obviously, you know, Mike James. Somebody ran into him at the airport. Did you see that on the board? Somebody ran into Mike James, and he sounded like he really liked Patrick Kells. Now, now will he come back? Who knows? He's got to make his own decision. But I think he'd do really good under Pat Kelsey. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's good um, to see that he embraces it, man. He just embraces it. Yeah, so for sure. Well, I'm gonna let y'all pop on. I just want to hop in and say hey guys, but uh, I'll let y'all get back to it. I'm glad good you stopped you, in. Glad you stopped in, Kyle. All right. I'm gonna post a link one more time if anybody wants to come and give their take uh, on the new coach or, or whatever you want to talk about. Give us a take on you know football spring practice. Will Smith signing this baseball contract. I'm, be- I'm begging somebody to talk baseball, too. So uh, anything you guys want to come on and give a quick take about, feel free. I'm glad you mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned football, too, because I'm getting the itch, man. That spring practice. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm going to be at the, I'm gonna be at the spring, grand, spring game. I'm, I'm super excited. Hey, JV, I see you're in here, man. Get in here. Join the <laughs> league, dude. J- JV, yeah. get in here. Come on, talk to and us. And I did. Uh, I did have a conversation again tonight about our tailgate. We are going to have a tailgate for the spring game. Um, I'm going to be providing some burgers or not burgers. I'm not doing burgers. I'm doing brats and hot dogs. Um, everybody's responsible for their own. If they if they want any beverages, they got to bring their own beverages. But we'll have we'll have a little. We'll let you guys know where we're we're going to be and everything. Um, here in the next couple of weeks for the spring game, but we got a couple of guests on. Uh, JV, I'm gonna bring you on first. JV, what's going on? It's about time you join. <laughs> what's going on, fellas? What's good with y'all? What's up, man? What's up, man? Great, dude. Not a whole lot, man. I just want to say, man, appreciate you guys having me on. Appreciate you guys shouting us out whenever we drop in. You guys drop in on us. Uh, Man, I'm excited. You guys know I'm a teacher. I was sitting at my desk watching the press conference. I was cleaning up after my kids had left. And, man, let me tell you, I was ready to run through. I was... There he is. There he is. Man, I was was ready to run through my laptop. I was so excited, dude. I, I was. just ran through your phone there, dude. Yeah. And <laughs> like, you know, the thing of it is when they started putting Richard's name out with his, it's like, of course you would want Richard over him. You know what I'm saying? Because you know the last name. Right. But Richard's resume isn't close to his. Right. I mean, he's always won. And truth be told, fellas. His personality probably fits us more than anybody that's been mentioned. I agree. I For sure. couldn't agree, agree more. Couldn't I think he's so, rallying our fans. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I'm trying to – man, I, I'm trying to find me a new Duncan Cardinal pullover to buy. Uh, I'm ready to go, man. Appreciate you guys having me in. New basketball shirt, too. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely, okay. JV. Listen, Power 10 is always welcome here. Um, you're the best, man. You guys are doing great stuff, and I appreciate you coming in tonight. Seriously, dude. Yeah, appreciate like, you guys, man. Yeah, I feel like they're they're always on, man. Like those guys they are. They're, they're killing they're it. They're killing it. They're doing good stuff. Des, yes, I'm glad you could up? join us. What's going on? How y'all doing? Doing good great, man. Wow. 
Uh, I mean, I'm 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 how is it? I'm cautiously optimistic. That's what I was trying to say in the chat. Yeah. I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, I, I mean, I, I like the press conference, but I wasn't like too like excited. But because I'm like, I'm on person is you got to show me because mm-hmm. you can talk and talk, but you got to walk the walk. And I just hope that he can walk the walk. I mean, he, I mean, I, I give him a, a chance, but he, but like, but but the thing is though, the way the some, I'm not saying all fans, but some of the fans were saying about you know who we are and all that, and with Trisha Porter, he's gonna have to show that he can win faster than usual than the usual yeah. building building yes. block. And, and that's all I've been saying. Now he got so that he, he got to win not because of not, you know what I'm saying? The, the fans going to get on him. And all I'm going to say is if he wins, I'm going to be there. But if he not, I'm going to be on him like we will be with, with anybody else. Yeah. And, I just, and like I said, that's all I'm on with just, you know, the fair treatment, you know, of the coach or whatnot. And just I hope that he can win. I hope that he can just, you know, I, you can tell he's not scared of the moment. But I just, yeah, like I said, I'm just cautiously optimistic. I, I like, I, I want to succeed, but it's like, I don't want to be average. You know what I'm saying? Right. I feel yeah. you. hundred percent. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, I was saying a hundred percent, man. Like you're right. And, and we're all going to be, it's all, look, we're in the honeymoon stage right now and, and it feels great. Right. But the end of the day, it's going to come down to results. And if he wins and, we're gonna be we're gonna be on him if he's if if it's not working out and, and we're gonna be praising him if it is and um you're right man that's what it comes down to um but so far so far like I said man so far so good so yeah I, but I, one thing I, but, but the thing that I loved though was when he gave uh, the olive branch out to Kenny Payne because I was not expecting that at all mm-hmm. like I, I agree I like that and it touched yep. me. Because even though he didn't work out and like he, at the end of the day, he's still one of us. You know what I'm saying? He, and I totally we, agree. And I feel like we yeah. should be like, even though it didn't work out, we shouldn't, we still should be like not treat him the way we treated him. Some of us did. At the end of the day, he tried the best he could. It wasn't perfect or like that. But at the end of the day, at least just have him, let him have his dignity and respect. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't mm-hmm. do anything wrong. He tried to do, he tried to do things the right way, but it just didn't work out. And I'm just yeah. glad that he, we got that olive branch to reach out to him. You know, you can always come back and visit and whatnot. And it really, it really touched me. Like, it really, like, got to me. Whatnot. Because I was clapped so hard, I woke my dog about his sleep when he said that. So yeah. I really appreciate it about them. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. I, where I think all three of us are in agreement. Like, I know some people said, oh, whatever. I, I agree. I thought it was cool that he did that. Um, give Kenny respect and, and let him know that he's still, he's still one of us. It didn't work out. It sucks, but He's still one of us. I, I agree. I agree. Desmond, hey, thank you for coming on, man. You're one of the best we got. Seriously, you're one of the best. Thank you so much, no problem, brother. Whole, thank keep you. Thing. I have a good night. Go yeah, you as well. Man. You Go as well. Hard. I love when Desmond comes in, man. He always brings good, positive vibes. Yeah, it's been a minute yeah. since we've heard from Desmond. So, Yeah, I think you know he brings up an interesting point. Like, Cautiously optimistic, I would say, is how a lot of us in the Discord uh, felt. Like, you know, we're a little hesitant to like go 150%, but like we're about as close as we could be just from a presser, right? But I think a lot of us still want to see him prove it on the court. And I think what makes me cautiously optimistic is to be successful at Louisville. Like you can't just like, you got to be more than a coach. Like you got to be out in the community. You got to be able to hit up donors. I mean, you gotta be able to do all of those things. Like speak well in front of the media as odd as that sounds like you have to be able to do all of that to be the coach yep. at Louisville. And I think he checks every box other than the recruiting. We haven't seen it yet just cause I mean, it's been a day and then his success on the court cause it's been a day. So like, yep. I think everything else though, like he's got it. He embraces it. That's the best. That's the coolest part about it. Like he knows how important this place is amongst college basketball elites. He knows it. He couldn't wait to get here. I know a lot of people have memed the Josh Hurd, I want someone who can crawl here statement. <laughs> but even Pat said, in the, he said, Josh, I'd run there. He right. embraces it. He is so grateful for the opportunity. You could see that yesterday, like he wasn't crying, but he was getting a little emotional just thinking about the enormity of this position and what it means. And, um, it's 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 just a breath of fresh air. It's so cool to see someone truly embrace Louisville basketball 
and, and he, you know, one thing he said, um, I don't have the clip of it, but he, he told Josh and he told the uh, president, I'm, I'm not going to let you down. And he told the fans, I'm not going to let you down. So it's really cool. It's really cool to see. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I'm super excited, man. I, and the fact that he does like to, you know, shoot a lot of threes and he likes to get score some points and, and the tempo numbers seem like they're pretty good. That actually matters to me too, because man, I just did not want to coach where you were like winning games 49 to 48 and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I saw a lot of Mick Crone and Cincinnati teams do that and it can be very boring basketball. So yeah. <laughs> even if you're winning, it can be very boring. So no, for sure. Yeah. And did you, did you all see the video of um, him when he first saw his office? He like walked yeah. in. Yeah, I did see that. He walks in and he's like, like, this is my office. And he's like, I, I swear to God, he's like, I thought it was, this was like a lounge. And he's like, for a lounge, <laughs> I was like, this is really nice. And he's like, this is my office. And like, I mean, he was emotional. Right. And yeah. like, I just, I love to see that because, you know, we, we obviously don't need to get into all the Kenny Payne stuff, but like, it just kind of felt like sometimes whether it's true or not, like he didn't care, like he didn't appreciate the job mm -hmm. and he didn't take it for what it's worth. And I feel like Pat Kelsey, you know, as Ty was saying earlier, like, I mean, he gets it. Like he, he understands the magnitude of this job. So yeah. I just love that. He is so, like I said, going forward, there's going to be, we're going to have more content revolving Coach Kelsey and things like that. I'm going to try my hardest, and I know Josh is going to try as well, to find something like I really want to do another film night. I think that was really cool how it worked for Dusty. Yeah. It's sad that the very next night it all was for nothing, but. <laughs> Yeah, because I thought it. I thought we. I thought that turned out so good, and I know we got a lot of good feedback on it. But I want to try to do something similar uh, for Coach Kelsey and and really break it down. I really, I really want to know about defense because mm -hmm. I I feel like his offense is going to translate. Um, defense is the only thing that I, I personally have questions on when it comes to his coaching philosophies and style. So we'll keep digging. We'll keep working on that. Um, hopefully we'll have something like that soon. Um, I know of also a lot of people have asked about on Fridays, like where's the games and stuff. We're going to get back to that as well. Um, obviously, but with the coaching search, like that had to go on the back burner a little bit, but we'll get back into that stuff. And, um, there'll be more fun, more fun content Friday nights coming soon. Now that the coaching search is wrapped up. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, also looking forward to getting back into some more football talk now that practices yes. are here. Yeah. Does anybody know when the next open practice is? I, I'm not sure. I, I believe they had one today, but I don't know I when the next one up. is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have the schedule in front of me, so. Give me a second. I'll take a look. Yeah, it seems like we've been so drowned. The basketball has drowned out just everything football-related. Uh, I really haven't seen any news about football lately. So uh, I so am excited I saw, to start seeing some of that. I saw a few notes today, Ash, from our Discord. Um, and obviously this is just one guy's opinion, but he was saying that um, our tight end, uh, what was the guy, he's a, he's a sophomore now. I can't believe I can't think of his name offhand. Uh, the tight end. Um, uh, Jamari Johnson? Yeah, Jamari. Yes, Jamari Johnson. They said he's in like extremely good shape, which is really exciting oh, awesome. because like his athleticism like jumps off the tape. Like he is like a wow athleticism. So him in like great shape, like I'm for I'm all for it, dude. Like I think he's just gonna be awesome this year. Uh I got an answer on the next one. The next practice is Thursday, April fourth at four PM. Okay. So that would be what next Friday? Or you say uh, Thursday? Thir Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> it's still Thursday on April fourth. <laughs> uh, but no, there's no. You're good. There's one on April fourth on Thursday and uh, Friday the twelfth, and then 
the 19th will be spring game. It's right around the corner, man. Yeah, I can't believe it's already almost here, guys. I got had to firm up that location for the third banner pod uh, tailgate. Unfortunately, I left the banner that I ordered for us in Texas, so I won't have it. Oh, no. Unless I order another one. I might now. have to just order a second one. Uh, we might be able to yeah. have a need for two anyway. We're going to figure have to figure out tables and a grill and all that kind of stuff. So, because I don't have any of that up here and up here and haven't moved any of my grill or anything yet. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun day. Fun day for sure. Well, and we'll have that second kind of portal season open up. Like, I don't know what you call it after the spring game and spring practice. Like, a lot of guys end up transferring. So, we're probably going to get the good end and the bad end of that. Like, with our level of recruiting, like, we have guys who other teams are going to want. So I think we're probably going to lose a few guys that are going to sting a little bit, but don't get too down because we also get to go and figure out where our holes are and do the same thing. So we'll probably get that on both ends. I suspect. I agree. What do you think guys? You want to wrap up? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, Any last words, Josh? Just, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I love the person of Pat Kelsey. Like I'm, I'm very excited about everything he's going to do. Um, and I'm just, I'm ready to see like recruiting wise, like we were posting transfers in the discord and everyone that was recruiting them. And it was amazing to see Louisville's name listed with all these top recruits again. I'm just like, Oh, thank God. So I'm cautiously optimistic, excited to see the recruiting. And then, you know, like y'all said, Excited for that like October time frame where we have that sweet spot in sports and I get Jeff Brom and Pat Kelsey. Like I'm so excited. So a lot to look forward to. Agreeing. Jeff Brom and Pat Kelsey both kicking ass would be just yes. music to my ears. So yeah, I, I have the same like Josh said. That's that's my final thoughts, man. I, I I'm we're day one of the Pat Kelsey era. So far, so good. So yeah. um I hope he keeps it up. I hope he keeps this momentum rolling and uh, we get some more recruiting news here soon. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the future. I, I, last week, last Saturday, we were down tremendous. Um, but to, to be where we are today, man, I, I, I'm excited. I can't wait to get started. So there's question marks. There's question marks for sure, but time will, time will tell and we'll answer that. So. I'm excited too, guys. Uh, Louisville is such a, a fun place to be when U of L is doing well in sports. It's just it's hard to describe if somebody was not from here. Mm-hmm. How much of a difference the city feels when U of L is doing well? It, it's just it, it's just a cool a cool added factor when we're doing well in, in football and basketball. So I'm, I'm excited, guys. Can't wait. Um, we'll be back at you guys live on Wednesday night at nine o'clock and then again, Friday night next week. So make sure if this is the first time you've caught us to hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the like button on this episode uh, and feel free to leave us a comment down below the video on YouTube. Uh, if you have any comments or, or any suggestions for future episodes or anything like that at all, we'd love to get some feedback from you. Appreciate y'all and go cards, go cards, go cards.